and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today on the show, we have Rabia Jalal. She's a physician and she wrote the Kevin MD article, Healthcare Should Be Apolitical, but it isn't. Rabia, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Poe, for having me. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and your journey to where you are today? Sure. So I'm a physician by training, but my story is a bit unconventional as I took a different path within healthcare. I went to medical school in Pakistan after finishing high school in New York as a teenager. And when I came back, I had a passion for public health, so I pursued a public health degree. And um, I found myself doing public health research. And then I went on to work in managed care. I worked in utilization management review. Mm -hmm. Um, I did psychiatric research. I uh, did HMOs, a customer service. And finally, I landed in clinical documentation, integrity, and quality. And currently, I work for a large healthcare organization um, at an acute care hospital in Central California. And so I basically consider myself a behind the scenes physician providing indirect patient care. And um, let's talk about your Kevin MD article, because I certainly think it's relevant to the political climate that we're seeing today. So it's titled, Healthcare Should Be Apolitical, But It Isn't. Now, for those who haven't read your article, can you walk Mm -hmm. my audience through it and perhaps share the story of why you decided to write it? Okay, yeah. So the reason why I wrote the article was because we're basically now about eight months into a pandemic, and uh, there's just a lot of frustration, I think, from everywhere. And that's basically what kind of made me write the article, because I was looking for, you know, a, a great pandemic response, and, you know, I thought we would just kind of end this like other pandemics that have happened before. And instead, I saw people were arguing over masks and uh, COVID being a hoax. And how it, and all these conspiracy theories that were coming out of uh, the pandemic, like it was created to bring down governments, uh, or it was done for political reasons. And so that's why I wrote the article because you know healthcare is. I mean, diseases are not. Uh, they don't care what political party you belong to. You can be a Democrat, a Republican, Independent, no party. Uh, it's an equal opportunity, like killer. So that's where my frustration lies. I think the way that we are approaching a pandemic in the United States certainly is different from that of other countries. Now, can you comment on some of the different ways that the response to the pandemic is being politicized? You know, you see people saying, okay, masks are, you know, we shouldn't have to wear a mask. It takes Mm -hmm. away our freedom. You know, physicians, healthcare workers have been wearing masks since the beginning of time. I can't imagine any healthcare worker saying, well, I don't think I'm going to wear a mask because it takes away my freedom or it's a hoax. This whole pandemic is a hoax, so I shouldn't have to wear one. You know, we're seeing uh, currently with what's going on with our election, upcoming election, it's being used as uh, a tool where each side is trying to, like, blame the other for the way the pandemic is being handled. Uh, We're seeing lately what happened with the CDC, where, you know, they're being supposedly being told that they're not supposed to uh, encourage testing or slow down testing. We saw it happen earlier with the FDA, where they were told, okay, you know, you need to come out and first they pushed hydroxychloroquine and now they're pushing like vaccines. And so I really feel like that's, you know, we're really politicizing something that is a healthcare and a public health disaster. I think a lot of the responsibility, of course, can be placed at the current administration um, with the president sometimes wearing masks, sometimes not wearing masks. And uh, especially during the convention, you see audience members not social distancing and not wearing masks. But I've read somewhere also that public health messaging is to blame as well, because at first, Jerome Adams, the Surgeon General, said Mm -hmm. not to wear masks. And a lot of the public health officials had to change their tune a month or two later. Are public health officials also partially to blame for the discordant messaging that is hampering the response to the pandemic? I absolutely think so. Uh, It's a brand new virus that we've never dealt with. So there was a lot of uh, confusion. There was a lot of misunderstanding. But I think eight months into a pandemic, we should at least be able to have like a national strategy to tackle this. And masks should be like the number one priority. It's just simple science. I don't understand why uh, people can't come out and say, you know, just mask up or keep 
social distancing or don't go out into crowds. Like we wouldn't have to have endless lockdowns if that had been done. Now, what are some of the answers here? So how do you convince uh, parts of the country to wear masks? Uh, what, what are some of your solutions? Well, first of all, I want to say it doesn't, uh, one of the interesting things I keep seeing is, well, it's freedom. Yes, everyone has their freedom, but we also have a social duty to other people. It does not take away your freedom if you protect yourself or you protect your loved ones. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I keep hearing that you become hypoxemic. And I, again, like there's no science behind that. You know, surgeons wear masks for like seven, eight hours at a time. I've had to wear a mask as a patient, as a physician. I have never become hypoxemic. There's so many of these um, miscommunication, misinformation Mm -hmm. out there. And that's, we need to tackle that. I think social media certainly plays a role in that Absolutely, because a lot of yes. people get their information on Facebook and there's a lot of misinformation that's out mm-hmm. there. I think also there's a historic level of distrust uh, when it comes to our public health officials. How, do, how can we get some of that trust back? Because in order for our message to resonate, the public needs to trust us and we're not at a level of trust where we need to be. So what are some ways where public health officials can regain the public's trust? I think the the medical community as a whole, especially public health officials, need to come together and put out one message instead of putting out a new message every day. You know, like I said, we saw that with the CDC where they had to take back some of their guidelines or they keep changing their guidelines. The FDA uh, had to do the same thing. All the healthcare agencies, public health, um, and also our physicians, our healthcare workers, we all need to come together as one unit. Let the public know that they this is what needs to be done. And the sooner we start doing it, you know, the faster we're going to get out of this. So the Democratic presidential candidate, Joe Biden, he specifically Mm -hmm. said that one of the things that he's going to implement is a national mask mandate. Can you comment on that? And do you think that something like that will be effective from a messaging standpoint? Okay, that is a tricky one. I agree with the message. But the issue is, again, it's going to be like, oh, now they're taking away our freedom. And how can they force, you know, how can government tell us what to do? So it's going to be problematic. I really wish that we had put in a national mask mandate until people start understanding that it's for their own good and for the the good of their health care, for their own uh, relatives and their loved ones, their friends. Um, I don't know how it's really going to work. I mean, we're seeing it right now, even with lockdowns, people are still violating those rules. All right. We're talking to Rabi Jalal. She's a physician Mm -hmm. and she wrote the KevMD article, healthcare should be apolitical, but it isn't. Now, is there something that you've learned over the last eight months of the pandemic? Something that you know now that you wish you knew back before the pandemic started? Yeah, I think um, we've kind of already touched on this, but for me, the biggest surprise and eye-opener has been honoring what you call a social contract Mm -hmm. or lack of during this never-ending pandemic. Uh, I mean, I never thought people would consider something as simple as wearing a mask or not being in large crowds or just staying home would be considered an infringement on their Mm -hmm. rights. Uh, We're kind of behaving like we've never had a a communicable disease outbreak before. That has definitely been an eye-opener for me. Sure. And my final question, do you have a take-home message that you want to share with the Kevin MD audience? Yes, my take-home message would be be kind. Whether you are going out in public or you are interacting with somebody online, just be kind. We're all going through so many different issues at one time with uh, the pandemic. There's, you know, loss of employment for people. Parents are having to deal with children staying home from school, just, you know, the social unrest that's going on. We have, you know, racial strife going on. So just be nice to each other, especially when you're interacting on a computer, unless you're a bot, like most people are humans behind a computer and they have feelings. And also when you go out in a grocery store or, you know, coffee shop, like do not be rude to other people if they ask you to wear a mask. And that's basically my take home message. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. Thanks again for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me.